Here is our host, Tian Wei. Hello and welcome to World Inside. I'm Tian Wei. The World Health Organization held talks on a new global treaty covering the pandemic in its special session of its governing body, the World Health Assembly. Representatives of the WHO's 194 members met virtually for three days. As of this month, more than 7 billion vaccine doses have been administered worldwide, preventing countless deaths and helping to turn the tide against the pandemic in many countries. But mass vaccination efforts are overshadowed now with a failure to ensure people in developing countries and the least developed economies also benefit from it. With the surge of the Omicron variant, what it will take to keep the next COVID wave at bay? The answer includes more inclusive governance, better global cooperation for sure, and more effective treatment and vaccines. On this and more, take a listen to Ding Sheng, the director of the Global Health Drug Discovery Institute. He's a pioneer in researching stem cells using traditional Chinese medicine along with Western know-how. Take a listen. Dr. Ding, good to see you again. Oh, likewise, it's my pleasure. With your background, why are you so fascinated by you know, what's going on in the traditional Chinese medicine? Yeah, uh, that's a really good question. Uh, as you know, uh, I have been really trained uh, in modern uh, biomedical research uh, for the last 30 years. Uh, I think one, uh, uh, one key uh, uh, fascination uh, to me, it's really uh, the, the Western medicine and the traditional Chinese medicine are, are actually quite different, are really two parallel scientific paradigms. Tell me more about that. Yeah, in the Western medicine paradigm, uh, we will often consider a specific disease is really caused uh, by a particular change of a biomolecule. Uh, so we would uh, discover uh, and develop a drug that can interact with this specific biomolecule to really correct uh, its function and consequently to cure the disease. Mm -hmm. So in some way it's really a, what we call a reductionist approach. But in the traditional Chinese medicine, uh, uh, the, the paradigm uh, or the view is actually quite different. Mm. Uh, the disease uh, would be viewed uh, as a, a different state from normal and this particular state it's really a result of a cascade of network of interactions of different components. Uh, could be uh, different mechanisms, different biomolecules from different different organs. Ultimately, through that network interaction, ultimately results in this specific state, that w what we call disease. Mm -hmm. and, and also uh, 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 modify that disease state, uh, perhaps by actually modulating different part of this network uh, to really uh, uh, re rebalance that uh, state back to normal state. So, so that, that's sort of a, this a more holistic mm -hmm. uh, system-based approach uh, to disease. Which is more precise, which is better? Um, as the scientific field uh, uh, are moving forward, uh, we're seeing a lot of overlaps uh, we're, 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 we're merging actually between the, the Western and the Chinese uh, medicine uh, paradigm. Give me some examples. Um, as I mentioned early on, uh, in, the, in the traditional Chinese medicine practice, uh, you may uh, treat, for example, uh, a heart disease uh, by actually uh, using medicine uh, uh, that actually modulate a different tissue organ. Mm -hmm. and, and now actually, uh, we're seeing more examples actually in also in the Western medicine practice, for example, in the current cancer treatment, a mainstream, a very effective uh, treatment would be modulating our own immune system to treat the cancer. Another example would be uh, people are, are studying uh, treating the gut uh, 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 for actually uh, by uh, using developing drug that actually modify the gut microbiota, uh, the, the, the gut uh, microbiome to treat neurological disease. Mm. I mean, those ideas or those approaches would be very unpopular, controversial, you know, many years ago, but now actually it's becoming mainstream Western medicine. So mm. those are the uh, 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 emerging sort of uh, similarities. Yeah. But also, um, I would say in recent uh, years, uh, the, the biomedical uh, research also converged on looking at 
so-called systems biology. Uh, um, you know, a, what does a, that mean? A, a pioneer uh, uh, leader uh, in this field, uh, Li Hu, uh, actually uh, talk about how actually uh, looking at networks of biomolecular interaction mm -hmm. uh, would define a precise disease mechanism. He would also, uh, you know, present uh, uh, how actually um, disease uh, can be uh, can be managed uh, in a sort of a pre-disease, a pre preventive. A manner, so those concepts actually uh, uh, exist, you know, uh, uh, hundreds or even even thousand years ago in the traditional Chinese medicine, which is also uh, about actually treating the pre-disease, uh, the unhealthy state. How actually that can be modified or modulate uh, to maintain the the health state. Mm. From now uh, until we build that bridge, in a way. Mm -hmm. uh, between the traditional Chinese medicine and the Western medicine, you know, what is to you, what as a scientist, what's the best approach that we understand the traditional Chinese medicine? I think uh, uh, in the past uh, couple of decades, there had been a lot of uh, research activities uh, in terms of actually uh, employing uh, the Western medicine scientific approaches to sort of a, a better uh, uh, understand and uh, develop, you know, Chinese medicine. Uh, in other words, that's about, you know, um, uh, purify uh, uh, individual uh, components uh, uh, and the substance compound from those different herb extracts mm -hmm. and, and, and uh, find out the target of those individual small molecules and, and also um, investigate uh, how those uh, individual uh, specific small molecule through modifying that target mechanism to modify the disease. Mm. So, so really, there uh, in the past, uh, you know, many years, uh, um, there's that paradigm. Uh, uh, um, what we also know uh, this uh, uh, famous uh, anti-malaria drug uh, uh, was actually a uh, um, derivative of the Chinese medicine practice. But uh, essentially, it's a Western medicine right. uh, approach. Uh, it's really an individual, uh, specific uh, compound for treating uh, as an anti-malarial drug. Mm. Uh, so, so there, there was that. You know, really taking the the, the Western medicine approaches to fur to further dissect. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, traditional Chinese medicine mechanism. Now, actually, as also the biomedical research further advanced into understanding a uh, system-based uh, uh, biology, you know, the network interactions, uh, um, and also uh, given now actually uh, new technology development, now we can look at, you know, teaching the work in, at a single cell basis mm -hmm. to look at actually how they are modulated uh, by different uh, signals. And now there's also uh, uh, emerging uh, uh, bioinformatics, big data approaches using uh, ever uh, improving computational uh, power. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I think we're now really at uh, uh, the the I, I would say um, uh, the the new beginning uh, uh, to to use all of those uh, uh, new technologies, new scientific understanding uh, to further advance actually uh, traditional Chinese medicine under that holistic uh, system based uh, view. Uh, uh, of, uh, you know, Ch Chinese medicine. I like what, everything you said, and, and especially the momentum, new momentum being built as a result of new technologies, mm -hmm. big data. Can you maybe give us some examples as to how big data now have served, uh, in a way, as that bridge, a building of that bridge? Uh, for example, uh, in, the, uh, in the traditional practice of disease uh, diagnosis, a Chinese doctor would actually practice uh, uh, with the patient by looking at different aspects of this individual and now actually uh, that different uh, um, uh, uh, measurements actually can be uh, digitalized. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, uh, um, and those digitalized images yeah. uh, perhaps can be uh, uh, tagged and, and also uh, assembled into the big data and then sort of subsequently uh, using perhaps artificial intelligence type of approaches Mm -hmm. uh, to uh, to better uh, 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 quantify actually 
uh, those different uh, uh, process. Mm. Uh, so so uh, uh, better digitalizing and quantifying actually those traditional Chinese medicine practice uh, actually can can really uh, uh, in my view uh, can actually remove uh, some of the existing barriers because right now it's all by different doctors based on their you know teaching based on their experiences okay. uh, it's not very quantitative uh, could be uh, could vary actually from individual to individual but with this type of system, uh, we may have a more uniform, uh, a more quantified, actually, uh, uh, analysis or measurements, uh, and also the ultimately disease, more precise disease diagnosis. Chinese traditional medicine, you see it is a combination of so many things, right? It is mm -hmm. about, of course, medicine itself, but the health, but it's also about literature, it's about the philosophy, it's about mm -hmm. uh, uh, myth, ancient mm -hmm, myth, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it's about geography, a lot of things combined. Mm -hmm. How confident are you, you know, mm -hmm. given the little knowledge that we have today worldwide mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. traditional Chinese medicine, uh, that you will be able to, with your colleague, really interpret the, the science behind it? You know, in, in, in many ways, uh, the, the traditional Chinese medicine uh, really centered on uh, the, the human human being nature interaction uh, uh, from that actually you know a really talented mm. uh, doctor physician mm -hmm. really extract and synthesis those different observations right. into this specific practice uh, I think again uh, uh, that's really just a one uh, a segment of time of you know human beings understanding of nature understanding of you know, human being and nature interaction. Uh, and again, we can really use, you know, new understanding, new tools and technology right. to, to better review, you know, the fundamental basis behind that interaction. This will evolve uh, into a, a, a higher resolution, better understanding, uh, you know, it's like any uh, scientific uh, uh, field. Uh, uh, we, we continue, you know, human beings continue uh, to break that boundary uh, to review sort of the next frontier, uh, next understanding of that uh, uh, phenomenon. Professor Ding, fascinating stuff. Thank you so much. I learned a lot. Well, thank you for having me again. Thank you.